Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 265. I'm your host, Norman Simpson. Joining me today is Wills. I'm not joining me. You're joining me! Uh, oh wait, you're, you're joining someone. <laughs> or we're joining everybody. Or we're, we're all joining hands. Yay. Singing songs. <laughs> songs will be sang. Yay! Hey, except you, Norman. What? Yeah, you're a terrible singer. We're going to have to put you on a solo. Solo, we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, so how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, well, let me see. Uh, there's a few uh, tidbits that I need to um, state, uh, point out before we start. Um, today marks the first day of the fasting month of Ramadan. So for you people out there who are Muslim, happy Ramadan. Hope you guys make it true because fasting can be easy. But that's besides the point. So anywho. So Wills, what have you been doing, man? Talking to you. Besides that. <laughs> oh, you know, just living life and dealing with work and planning on how to deal with my weekends. Ain't that usually the case? You just sit home. Oh, it, it's, 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 it's life. What are we supposed to do, Norman? I mean... Are we supposed to spend all our time playing games? Yes. Especially games that keep on getting removed? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, wow. Being removed. Well, you know, I enjoy the games. Like, um, recently, oh, another news topic that's, uh, not on the list is, um, Them Fighting Hurts beta came out for backers who backed $40 and above. Finally. So the game that got cancelled because it was too close to something else and got reborn as something else finally gets a beta. Yep. It's the public beta. Well, actually, it's just the backer beta. But still, it's a fun game. Uh, uh, some of the elements from the previous games are in there, like Applejack's uh, system mechanics and also uh, Fluttershy's thing and also Pinkie Pie's. Like, the game is still raw. It's not even done yet. Like, the walk cycle for the Unicorn Twilight thingy doesn't have a proper walk cycle. So, the game is really, really raw. So she just hovers across. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, if you, the taunting mechanic in the game is fun, you press down three times or more, your character will do something. Uh, in terms of Arizona, the cowboy cow character, uh, she does a headbang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because headbanging is taunting. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but the game's still raw, like, the system mechanics are there, it's fun and all, but I do wish that, how to put this, I won't say that I'm not glad that I played the game as it is, but I really like to have a game that's finished, you know what I mean? Well, it's, it's beta, it's mostly just out to, you know, show the rough of the whole thing. Oh, true, but this is still rough, like even character poses, like they show um, sketch art for certain characters, so that's how raw it is. <laughs> It's so raw, Gordon Ramsay would send it back. Ah, uh, yeah. But, like you mentioned before, talking about games and games that are being pulled from stores, um, you remember that pony puzzle game, uh, the My Little Pony Puzzle Party game, whatever it is? Oh yeah, we talked about that a while ago. Yep, yep. Yeah. It seems that that game is going to be pulled from wherever it's being held, like iTunes and also um the Google Store. It's a goodbye little pony game. We hardly knew ye. Yeah, and here's the thing about the game that well, we've mentioned before. This game copies uh this game has the eerily similar playstyle to a game called Toy Blast. It went down from the skills to the level itself. And it seems that they've settled to well, I- I'm not hundred percent sure if they settled, but the case is settled and Hasbro is pulling the game out from their, uh, well, like I mentioned before, iTunes and also uh, Google Play. If you have downloaded the game, it's there for you to play for a long, t- for all times. But don't expect any support or don't expect any updates whatsoever. Ah, uh, it's gone the way of the PT demo on PlayStations. Yeah, the PT demo was good. Uh, cool. And this was just a, okay, I guess it's not a fair comparison. True, but still, it's a comparison to uh, something similar to 
debt, which is... It's gone. It's gone. You can no longer get it. If you have it, it's all that remains. Yep. Unless you go to those websites where people upload the, the uh, ISO file. I'm not sure what they call it. But those files, you know. <clears throat> Uploading a crack of it. Yeah, something like that. But still, I've played the game and it's meh. Nothing to cry over. Well, I know maybe nothing to cry over, but you know what is something to cry over, what, Norman? What is it? Mid-season finales. Oh, God, no. I knew that this is going to happen. I knew this was going to happen somehow, some way or somehow. We're going to get a mid-season finale like we did last year. And mm, last year was good, right? Like that happened when Princess Luna episode, I forgot her name, or that episode with the Tentabus. Uh, the Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep. Yes, that that one. That was a good place to end the season, or the mid-hiatus. Yeah, but instead, uh, wait, if it and if it's ending on the not asking for trouble for American audiences, um, is Canada still getting early showings? No, no, I'm 100% sure, because as of this week, they're rerunning episode 1 and 2. Oh, okay, so... If you were watching the Canada episodes, congratulations. You, uh, you, you reached the mid-season finale way sooner than anybody else. <laughs> oh, God. No. Uh, no. But still, that, that's something to ponder about. But yes, yeah, the mid-season finale is there usually for, uh, the show creators to finish up on the stuff that they need to do. I remember reading something about the show not even being finished yet. Well, like most shows, they uh, usually are doing a constant uh, catch-up. Like, you know, they have uh, only so much time to get before the show has to be aired. Heck, yeah, I remember one particular show. Um, <clears throat> I believe it was actually the final episode of Kill a Kill mm. uh, was actually being made by uh, Studio Trigger. Literally, it was finished, like, an hour or two before it was to air on television. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <gasps> that's, oof, that's something. But still, wow. I've noticed this with a lot of American programs. Like, you notice how some shows tend to uh, play, like, week by week and then suddenly stop and then continue on. Uh, for example, Steven Universe, Adventure Time, uh, even Sonic Boom. What else follows that trend? Um, most of the Disney, most of the Disney shows. You, you notice that? I guess it just has to deal with um, scheduling and just how they. You know what? I can't. I, I can only hypothesize why they do that. I'm, I, I would have to leave the answer to someone who's more knowledgeable in the field itself. Yeah, and if you do know, please put it in the comments below because it will be a hook for us to read. And you know what? When one goes away, it doesn't mean uh, nothing's going to replace its spot because um, we are going to get the mid-season hiatus in June, but you know what's coming after that? Oh yeah, the Equestria Girls movies or the movie-esque episodes. Yeah, the special, the 21-minute full-length series thingy with only three episodes, which, <laughs> funny enough, I've seen two of them and I hope I get to see the third one soon. Uh, probably when this episode comes to air, I've already seen it. But the fact of the matter is, I can't wait to hear the English dub of the show because hearing the girls speak in Polish is quite jarring. Of course it's jarring. It's Polish. It's absolute gibberish. Don't insult the Polish audience if we do have any. Okay, okay, fine. It's not absolute gibberish. I mean, it's not Swedish. <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to hold myself with that one because ooh, Swedish chef is in my head. Oh, great. Here, <laughs> sure to be your friend, Oh, God. Uh, well, anywho, uh, this one is going to start in late June and airs its way to July. I think it's once a week kind of deal. Starting with Dance Magic, Movie Magic, and Mirror Magic in that order. I think 24th of June. 24th of June is going to be... Yeah, let's one. face it, we just want to see Mirror Magic, man. We just want to see Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shiver Beat. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but this is going to be on a Saturday, like I mentioned before, replacing the spot of the ponies. 
And did that thing or the the ponies thing that you mentioned before? Um, what was it again? Not asking for trouble. Oh, okay, June seventeen. Right after that ends, uh, Kushra Girls are going to take over their place. Oh, just like it always is. When there's no actual show, the Equestria Girls show up. Yeah. Yay, but still, the Equestria Girls is fun. Eh, it can be fun, I guess. My only thing is, though, I thought I thought these uh, were coming to uh, Netflix first, though. I didn't know they were being aired normally. You know what? I thought so, too. Huh. That's strange. Hmm. That, yeah. that is strange. I, I didn't remember reporting on that. But you, you know what? Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, as long as we get it and it's available for downloads on iTunes, it's all good. And you know what? Um, talking about movies, the 2000, well, the My Little Pony movie, somehow Entertainment Weekly got their hands on some snapshots and, well, not really snapshots, but a picture and turned it into a 360 view, which is cool. Uh, unfortunately, the 360 stuff is um, only for those who have really cool smartphones. True. But you know what? If you don't have that, you can always look at the full picture in flat screen. Doesn't really bother. Like, it still works. But again, it's just a, it's just a big flat image with uh, music. So that's all it is. You're not missing anything amazing now. Yeah, I mean, except sea bonies. Ha ha! Ah! Uh, that's... That, that's that's that 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 that, that, that that's a um, matter of taste <laughs> if you consider sea ponies. <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, there's nothing more to say about this because this is kind of well a promotion thing. Um, Hasbro's doing good; they want to push the pony movie, and I do hope I get to see this, and I do hope that you have fun watching it with your buddies. Ponies movie aside, 2018. It's going to be one of those years where we're going to get more ponies. I think this has been the trend of we're going to get more ponies every year. Except this year is going to be more than others because of the movie. But season 8 is going to be on 2018. Woo! More! <laughs> oh gosh, the ride never ends. Never. The ride never ends! They did mention there might be adding 8 more seasons to the list. Oh god, it's turning into The Simpsons. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't know. The Simpsons kind of petered out around season seven, was it? Oh, so this is it. This is it, Norman. There, there's nothing left. We're all dead. Oh, well, they uh... added new characters. Starlight Glimmer seems to be one of those characters that seems to be getting a push. <laughs> yeah, and, and pretty soon season twelve will roll around, and none of the main six will have anything to do with it. And uh, <laughs> e- worst case scenario, worst case scenario, panic, panic. Oh, you! But anywho, the show is going to get an eighth season, um, and this was confirmed by someone at the licensing expo, and they pop up this picture. Yeah, this is cool. And what else can I say? Remember last week what we did with the discussion podcast about writers? Ah, yes, writers. The people who I have very little knowledge on, but they do a whole bunch to help this show along. Yep, and it seems that Mike Vogel is one of them, and he'll be writing for Season 8. Oh, cool. Can't wait to see what they've come up with. Yep, I can't wait. Sounds fun. Yep, he seems to write good. I remember him... Liking, uh... Oh, oh, Norman, not right good. He writes well. Come on. We all know proper English in this channel. Okay. Okay. I jump good. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, he's going to be writing for season 8, and I can't wait to see what he does, because he likes to write for Starlight Glimmer somehow. So, that's good. Oh, sweet. If you can write uh, Glim Glam perfectly fine, I'm pretty sure many fans will be happy. Indeed. And and some won't. Some just hate her no matter what happens, and they're just impossible to please. Yeah. Uh, but impossible to please is one of the things that um creative person strive for. And talking about creative person and hard to please, Hascon! Hey, tickets are on sale. Yay. That was a very interesting segue, hey, but uh, yes, Hascon. Well, speaking of some writers who some think, some think they just con their way out of things, oh, let's God. talk about another con. There you go. There's a better. Okay, actually, actually, that segue was even more ham-fisted. 
<laughs> ah, the NBA show known for their terrible, terrible segues. <laughs> At least not as bad as the regular Segway, which sends you off a cliff like it's like it's CEO. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah, but anywho, um, Hashcon is a thing. We mentioned it before. And it's going to be at uh, Patrick? R.I.? What's that? Um, I don't know locations for states. But anywho, it's going to be there. Tickets are on sale. Um, if I do remember right, tickets are going to... Rhode Island. Yeah. That's Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yeah, tickets are going to be thirty dollars for youth at the age of three and fifteen, sixty dollars for adults sixteen and up. Uh, three day tickets range from seventy five dollars for the youth and hundred and sixty five dollars for adults. That's kind of spendy. Yeah, true, true. But when you think about it, ain't that the same price for uh, BronyCon tickets? No, BronyCon is like er, er, early tickets are like around sixty or seventy. For a three day. Ah, all right, all right. Yeah, this this price this pricing is more like something you'd see at like you know Comic-Con? Comic-Con yeah. or BlizzCon. Actually, no, BlizzCon is Bl- Bl- the BlizzCon ticket experience is this. Tickets are open. Tickets are now closed. <laughs> yeah, like oh, refresh page. Yes, I can buy the tickets. What? It's just been two seconds. I can't buy the tickets anymore. What the hell? <laughs> ah, but anyway, um. If you think that was expensive, uh, 165 is expensive, um, get this. $200 for youth tickets and $600 for adult tickets. And these are VIP tickets. And what comes with being a very important person to Hasbro? You know what? I haven't read up on it and I'm just clicking on the thing now. So I'm going to check it I'm, out. I, I, if, if, if it's an opportunity to punch Michael Bay in the face, sign me up. I doubt that. They didn't really announce any. Ooh, uh, discover our VIP tickets. Um, let's see. VIP tickets, $600, three days, uh, priority access for some of the events, get Hescon souvenirs, see how the show and more, uh, see all included features. Yeah, basically, you, you have top priority. Oh, wow. I have top priority, the front of the line. Woo. Hey, it's all good. But anyway, um, <laughs> the, the key feature here is um, they're pulling all... Well, actually, this is a convention for all of their um, Hasbro brandings uh, from G.I. Joe to Ponies to the Monopoly. And this is a place where you can try out for their shows. Um, I think it's more of an audition for shows or something like that. So that's one way to do it. And one of the cool thing is... Guest appearance from Peter Cullen, Frank Walker, Stan Lee, and the guys from the My Little Pony and Transformers. Dang, there is a lot of people. Yep, and that's the one that they listed out, not including the people who create the show and so on. Um, from the Pony cast, we get Andrea Lipman, Kathy Westluck, and Megan McCartney. So that's cool. Well. Oh. I guess it would be a fun con to go to if you're in the area, or if you want to fly out and you're a big Hasbro fan. Well, um, I would be if I had the cash. In all honesty, I would just spend about $60 for a day ticket. Like, honestly, three days, like, unless they're doing something really, really special, I'll just spend 60 bucks just to get in and do whatever I need to do and spend the rest of the time doing it other else. Well, there's not much to do in Rhode Island, man. Really? Well, honestly, I go no. Oh, there, there probably is. I mean, there's probably a whole tourism board say, "Hey, we're Rhode Island, where we get to compare it to everything, especially in those disaster movies. How big was it? Oh, it's the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> How big is Rhode Island, by the way? <laughs> oh, it's the size of a large meteor that could destroy the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got me there. Okay. Okay, how big is <laughs> No, you're not going to Google and... that home. Ah, boys. But anyway. It is 1,212 square miles. Oh, wow, this big. But anywho, um, that's the news for this week. And you know what? That was not bad. Um, I, I have to say that today's news is a lot, but it's more of a rehash and more of what things to come for the future. Yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's a bit news that we've already known, but more so, hey, this is... A lot of update news is what it really is. Mm, a lot of confirmations, like uh, we didn't know when was the convention, but we didn't know the ticket price, but now we do. 
um, the movie, well, 360 view for you, so that's good. And other things than that, nothing much really. Uh, but well, we come yeah, to... Uh, it's not like we needed any confirmation or anything else. So mm, True, I mean, there's nothing really new except for the meet. Uh, season hiatus, which is kind of new to me because I thought Canada is going to show all of it before the States and we'll be lagging behind. Ah, well. So we at least have some stuff to look forward to. Some Equestria Girls and a new season of Pony next year. Hmm. But till then, we're going to have to have this whole mid-season hiatus, which means it's up to you, the content creators, to get us through. Yay? Why are you looking at me like that, Norman? I don't know. You, you... Quit judging me. You're a Quit judging me. I'm supposed to update my fic, I know. <laughs> Quit trying to tell me with your eyes. <laughs> Hi. But anywho, let's go on to the other topic of the show that we enjoy, which is what have we been doing with our weeks, or what has been entertaining us for this week? And Will. Yeah, you go first. Really? No. Oh. Well. Yes, you go first. Huh, let's see. Honestly, um, nothing really new has popped into my... Okay, you know what? Uh, I'd be lying. I've been reading Pandemic. Oh, the fic I uh, I suggested. Yes, you did. And also, it's been popping up on the uh, film fix uh, top list. You know you know the one at the top where it keeps scrolling from fic to fix? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like every time they update, it gets at least bumped up to the one of the top 10 slots for interest. Yeah, so I've noticed that. And you know what? Since you sold it to me, I kind of, you know, I'll give it a shot. And it's really interesting. I, I do like the dynamic of the story from being on Earth to being in Equestria, being on Earth in Equestria until, like you mentioned, they converge. I haven't been to that part yet. I think I'm on chapter 19. So I haven't got deep into it yet. But I do like the way that the writers told the story. It's a mystery. It's a thriller kind of thing. It's really fascinating. I would recommend people reading it. Most of the fix are long. Like you mentioned, the average is about 7k words. But it didn't feel that way. It felt kind of fast. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it so far. Yeah, I, I can't wait. But one thing bugs me about one of the characters is Sunset Shimmer. In the fic, they say that Twilight doesn't know who Sunset Shimmer is. Um, a bit of a spoiler if I explain why. But I don't like that. If they put it as an AU, then I would understand, but they really didn't see it that way. So it's like, bugs me a bit. I guess I can understand your thing with that, but I didn't mind. I mean, every every fan fiction is just an alternate universe anyway. Oh, true. I mean, it's just that, you, you know what I mean, right? Like, if I had that AU marking, the whole bugging me thing doesn't really bother me that much. But since they didn't, it's like, nah. I get you. I get you. But still, but still, it's a good fic to read and I want to see how things conclude because I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be concluded in the future chapters because last update was on 20th of May uh, and I'm not 100% sure how often the author updates. You got any idea, Wills? They've been updating cons consistently. That's the one thing I have to say. This fic started uh, not too long ago, actually. I mean, geez, there's probably, uh, I can pull it up, but. The end of December. Yeah, so, and it's been updating uh, nearly weekly since then. Ah. Oh, all right. So yeah, I mean, you don't have to worry too much. It's been, they're, they're, they're pretty consistent. All right. Unlike me. <laughs> I ain't see anything. Uh, but this is a fic. You didn't have to. <laughs> uh, but this is a fic that I do recommend people, um, reading if they have the chance. Because it's fun. It's really fun. Besides that fic, Overwatch. Um, Overwatch is having their anniversary promotion or anniversary event. And all of the heroes have dance emotes. So, yay. <laughs> no, no, not all of them. Really? Reaper just stands there. Well, he's tapping his toe. It's some sort of dance, I think. No, it's a, I refuse to dance. But dang, is this music not making me want to get jiggy with it? But I'll tap my toe. But I did saw um, somebody uh, put a comparison video of who does this hero dance like. And Genji seems to be dancing like some kind of Korean dance group. I'm not 100% sure. 
it's there. I'll probably link it to you, Will, so you get a general idea of what I'm talking about. But still, this yeah, okay. this this event is fun. Like I like seeing them do silly things like this. And Mercy does the hustle. Do the hustle. <laughs> yeah, but so that's been my week. Like nothing much or nothing extreme other than things that I've been rehashing. What about you, Wills? Oh, what have I been up to? Well, aside from trying to work on my stuff and planning for a LARP next week, um, I've been, uh, I got a late birthday present in the form of a gift card for GameStop. Yay. So I actually got a game that I've been meaning to play for a while, uh, The Shadow of Mordor. So wait, when you got a, uh, what you gonna call this, a gift card, does it say one game or what? Oh no, it, it was just for a certain dollar amount. Uh. It was just for 30 bucks. And Shadow of Mordor was like twenty nine bucks uh, plus tax. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I haven't played it, and uh, it's the Game of the Year edition, so it has all the DLC. So might as well play it because that new one's coming out, and the new one looks really cool. And the old one was got great reviews and everything. And I have to say, I really like it. It's it's a very <laughs> very brutal though. It's a very brutal game. I heard it was almost like Assassin Creed ish. Yeah, it, it does have that vibe to it, but I'd have to say um, its platforming is at least better than Assassin's Creed because your character doesn't f- screw up as much as they do, do on that one. But no, what's really cool is uh, they've touted it before, the Nemesis system where uh, the Orc leadership has different things to it. But what's really cool is that um, the Wraith who's possessed with you, when you like scan uh, an enemy leader, he'll actually say their names like Mulrock. Zoklai, Vodu, and whatnot. And so, so like, it, there's a lot of voice acting for that. And the cool part is, when the war chiefs come out, the war chiefs will get a chant. It's like saying, Mole Rock, Mole Rock, of like all these orcs chanting for them and whatnot. Well, the, the thing is, though, is that there are some very weird names, like K-A, K-A, Ka, 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 Ka. <laughs> all right. <laughs> or probably the best one, is D U S H, and it's a and it's and it's a U and it's a U with a with an over sign for it, so it's supposed to be pronounced like ooh. Mm-hmm. So I am trying to get him to be a war chief, just so I can hear everyone chant <laughs> douche, douche, <laughs> douche. <laughs> what a douche! <laughs> Yes, we we are we are the most mature minds on the MBS show here. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, yep. 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 Indeed. Oh <laughs> uh, no, but it's it it is pretty fun, and um, it's a fun game. It's got a decent story, and the war the the cool thing I find about it is that the world that it takes place in is an open world sort of thing, but it's a small one. But it's compact. It's designed well enough that you that, that you don't have to worry. It's not a big empty space constantly. Hmm. All right, that's good. From what I've heard from people talking about the game, some people do like the Nemesis system, and some people don't. Like they kind of hate it, and it gets repetitive. Well, so I can see how people can say it can get repetitive, and this is going to sound extremely egotistical, but. The nemesis system doesn't work if you're really... That's not a word! Good. Oh. Sorry, you're going to have to censor that. <laughs> All righty then, sweetie butt, you know what to do. So, yeah, the, uh... <laughs> you, uh... If you, if you kill your enemies constantly... Like, I have died three times in the game. Mm-hmm. And all of it is to the bigger creatures and one time to an enemy. So I have not had the nemesis system actually do much for me because I just kill everyone I come across. All right. I, the the only time I've I've lost to a, an orc is because they can get uh, strengths. And this one guy was like uh, uh, invulnerable to ranged, invulnerable to combat, and invulnerable to this. And I'm like, oh, so how the heck am I supposed to kill him? You don't. <laughs> It was like, no, no, his one weakness was that he was scared of this particular animal. So it's just like, I had to basically, it was like, yoo-hoo, come chase me. And it's just like, he chased after me until I could find one of those animals. And then he was like, oh no, not that, my one weakness. Ah! 
there isn't much difficulty if you're familiar with this type of game. Mm, so basically, open world style Grand Theft, not really Grand Theft Auto, but Assassin's Creed. Um, um, yeah. More... If, also, if you're good at stealth games, yeah. if you're good at stealth games, just knowing which one to attack first and whatnot. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, we mentioned Assassin's Creed a lot. This game's not made by Ubisoft. This game's made by uh, Wonder Bros. Yeah, Warner Brothers, and uh, it's good. I'm, I'm looking forward to how uh, Shadow of War is because it's supposed to be bigger. Better and even more amazing than this, and I'm like, oh. Does it state okay. when on the timeline that this game is being played? Because I remember that this game is in between the Hobbit and the First Lord of the Rings. Somewhere yeah, it's supposed to be in between. It's supposed to be, be in between there, but it's also a bit of an alternate universe too. Like, like uh, Bill Wabagan still does have the ring, but the way it's suggesting is that this is like an, uh, an alternate offshoot. Like the Hobbit happened. And then this happened in a separate universe where it's like the ranger and the wraith, uh, start creating a split of a timeline basically. Mm. So the fellowship, the fellowship of the ring may still happen and the two towers, but things may diverge differently. Uh, all right. So the second game is going to address that then. Yeah. It'll, it'll probably say more about the split or if it is keeping in tune with the Lord of the Rings, uh, lore entirely, it's just more like a separate story of, yeah, because it's, I mean, it literally takes place in Mordor, and Mordor isn't just, you know, a, a barren, rocky, volcano-ish land. I mean, there's a lot more to Mordor than just that. So, it's, it's a pretty it's a pretty big country. While all that was happening that you saw in the Lord of the Rings movies, this was happening in Mordor. So, basically, it's like Dragon Age, then. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like Dragon Age in that regards. Or maybe, like, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> no. No, no, because last thing we need, I mean, the orcs are already ugly. We don't need to give them terrible facial animations either. <laughs> uh, we're mean. Oh, boys. But anywho, was it worth the $30 gift card that you spent on? Oh, it was a free game, totally. Yeah, all right. You're going to buy the new game when it's first released, or are you going to wait till, you know, Game of the Year or something like that? I usually wait. I usually wait just to see how stuff turns out, and even then it's like, Unless, unless it's a really, really good game that I'm really hyped for. Like, okay, basically, I'm gonna wait to see if it comes out uh, on Redbox. If it comes out on Redbox, I always rent it, because then I can rent it and try it. And if it's good, then I'll buy it. That's what I did for Final Fantasy 15. Oh, all right. Oh, by the way, have you heard the game Surge? Yes, uh, the uh, Dark Souls with mech suits. Yeah, and no multiplayers, but still, it's good from what I heard and from what I seen. People are really enjoying it. Well, that's great. So I was just wondering, um, are you gonna, have you played it? Have you tried it out or something like that? Nope. No? Eh? Nope. I haven't tried it out. Nope. I, uh, it was, there wasn't a, uh, there wasn't a demo of it. And, um, I'll probably just check it out when it gets cheaper. Hmm. Alrighty then. Or maybe on Redbox or whatever it is. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. So I, I do hope that you get to play it and get to hear you report in saying the game's like Dark Souls but with Max. <laughs> You're talking to a guy who plays Dark Souls a lot too. Like, Rolling around in Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne. I heard, I heard, like, I, I've seen you play Dark Souls. Have I seen you play Dark Souls? Like, imagining it. Actually, I'm, do, I'm doing a low level, a very low level, uh, uh, playthrough of Dark Souls 3 right now. Level 20. And I've dressed up the kid. The character has got green skin, a gigantic bulbous nose, and a pointy chin. Witch of the West. I got the big pointy hat. <laughs> You're playing that build. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I am playing uh, as the Witch of the West, and I'm just going around beating everyone up with Dark Hand uh, and uh, Staff. Yep, yep, you're playing that build. <laughs> Good luck. I, I think that's the end of the segment, but damn. Really, though, you, how successful is that build? Oh, how successful is it? Well, uh, if you just build nothing but health, and you use Iron Flesh... Uh, and just trade blows with people. If they don't realize you have iron flesh on, you can pretty much kill them. All right, you know, very successful. Uh... And Dark Hand is actually a very powerful low-level weapon. If you're, like, level 20 and you don't upgrade anything, um, you're guaranteed to find people that are, like, as low-level as you that don't have. And they're people that have probably built not 
not like that. So <laughs> you just come up with dark hand. It's like, why is this thing doing so much damage to me? <laughs> especially if you put, if you, especially if you put on the dark ring that, uh, boosts dark attacks. Oh God. You're just mean. Get someone in a grab in that and it does like over a thousand damage, which is guaranteed to kill anyone at a low level. Uh, you're just mean. But anyway, if you guys at home <laughs> have any questions, concerns for Will, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbsshowgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters, which is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. And Will, where can people send their hate to because you played a witch built? <laughs> Oh, well, um, you know what? Uh, I, I don't have anything anywhere. Can't find me. <laughs> I don't exist. I'm a ghost. I'll be sure to put everything in the show notes. <laughs> Dang it, Norman. You're trying to get people to find me and murder me, and it's bad enough that I'm getting invaded by stupid Aldrich faithfuls. It's bad enough. No, no I mean, that's a game. Don't, don't troll, like Torbjorn on attack. Oh, I wish I could play Overwatch. Uh, still haven't got the card yet? No, no, not yet. Alrighty then, never mind. Soon, soon. Uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvoLife.com. And also please subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast, also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, we do the MLP episode, comic and movie reviews, and discussions about certain characters or certain aspects of the show that we want to talk about and also we do reviews of other things like movies like real movies that went on to theaters like the what you call this superman versus batman we talk about that one and yay much awesomeness don't you mean much awesome martha <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah yeah but anywho um that's there and if you guys would like to support us, um, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, for a dollar, you'll get full access to everything we have and even early access to the review slash discussion podcast. And also our sincere thanks for five dollars you get, um, to suggest a review or discussion topic for us. And well, usually, uh, we do so on this discussion show, we usually talk about... Well, last week we talked about the new writers for season 6, which was really interesting. Oh, was that... I, I forgot. New writers for season 6. Was that Will? I forgot. I think that was the last one you did with me. I think you did a new one since then. Yeah, that one's not out until this week. So, yeah. But still, um, if you're interested, $5 will get you a topic of discussion or review and everything listed on below. So that's at patreon.com slash the MBS show. I do hope you guys support us. Um, even every little bit counts. I, I do hope you guys support us. Like I mentioned before, thank yous. I'd like to thank Lurker, Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nim Dracotoria, Starstream, and also Master of Light. Thank you guys for all your generous support. Norman wouldn't be here without you folks. Or he would be here. He just wouldn't be as... Norman E. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, well, anywho, I have been Norman E. <laughs> oh, I've been Will E. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show E. <laughs> See ya. See ya, E. <laughs> God.